Uh, Eric Butterworth is a great Unity writer, and many people know about him who've studied some of the courses. Discover the Power Within You is his biggest book, probably. And he said that, I think in that book, he said, a fellow came into his office one time, he was in New York City, and he said, oh my God, I just lost my job. It's a six-figure income. I don't know what I'm going to do. Eric Butterworth, looked at him, Eric Butterworth looked at him and said, congratulations, you'll probably get a better job. Not what the guy wanted to hear in that moment. Three weeks later, the guy came back and said, I got a better job. Eric Butterworth said, I knew you would. See? So we thought a catastrophe had hit, and it ended up being a better job, better opportunity. So what we have to do is understand that we have three tools here that we can use in order to get ourselves out of the sand traps of life. The first thing is an understanding faith. You just know, you just understand, but you can't explain it. You don't know how to use it, except be in it. And so an understanding faith is a faith where you understand what you have to do in order to put your faith in, in first shift and shift your faith into first gear and move forward in life. How you use it to get yourself out of that sand trap. And so an understanding faith comes from an understanding of who and what you are. It comes from your spiritual knowledge of yourself. It comes from the opportunities where you have had the opportunity because of the sand traps in your life to get out of them successfully. And you know, the same thing keeps happening to you over and over again. I'm sorry. You're not learning anything. But if, and most of you are, you go through something once or twice, you figure out how do I get through this? When you figure that out, you start to have this understanding faith. All of us have all the faith that we need. We were gifted, born into the power of faith. How we direct it determines how our lives uh, show up, how we show up. How we direct our faith determines how we show up in life. And so the idea is, is that I direct my faith in a positive way. Then the second thing, Oh, let me share this story with you. It's a great story anyway about faith. <clears throat> there was a minister in a small town in California. It's a true story. And uh, what happened was is that this, uh, this church had just been built on this beautiful piece of land. And they were getting ready to have their dedication Sunday. And about a week before that, two weeks before that, the building inspector showed up for the city and said, I'm sorry, you cannot open the church because you don't have enough parking lot. Your, your parking lot's not big enough. You don't have enough parking spaces. Well, there was a little problem. And the problem was that the parking spaces, you see, were up against a mountain. There was no more room. And they didn't really have the money to tear the mountain down. And so <clears throat> they were in this dilemma. So the, the minister called together the church's council and leadership in the church, and they said, what we want you to do is, what I want you to do is stay here with me, and we're going to pray until we feel like something good is going to happen. Something is going to resolve that. So they were eight hours in prayer when finally they all agreed, we've done all the praying we can do, something good's going to happen. And they left the room. The next morning, the minister is sitting in his office, and there's a knock on the door. And he said, we're, we're, we're with Acme Construction Company, and uh, we were wondering if we could buy some dirt from you off of that mountain behind you. And we'll pay you for it. Yeah, we'll pay you for it. And we also, where we take the dirt out, we will put in a parking lot so you can have a larger parking lot. They didn't know this was happening, okay, that the, they were in trouble. So anyway, Acme Construction Company, over the next 10 days, came in, took the dirt out, Paves a lot, and they opened their church on time. That's faith. And he understood the power of faith because he believes that if you can image something, which is the next step, you can imagine something that it can take place. So the second thing we have in our set of tools in order to handle the sand traps of life is the power of imagination. Now, when a golfer is standing up and you watch... Most golfers will stand behind the ball. And they do it for lot, most all shots. They'll stand behind the ball. Now, they hit the ball like this, but they're standing behind the ball. 
Why are they doing that? It's because what they are doing is using the power of imagination. What every professional golfer does is they see the shot before they hit it. They see where it's going to land. They see how it's going to go. Doesn't always do that, but that's what they see. That's what they, they, they sense. And so they have this powerful imagination that they know they have control over the ball because of the power of imagination. You and I, when we get in a sand trap of life, need to use the power of imagination to get out. You know, that can be so hard. It can be really difficult. And the reason it can be hard and difficult is because all we can see is the problem. All we can see is all the sand around us in that sand trap. And what we need to do is step out of that sand trap and step away and say, okay, how am I going to get out of here? What kind of club should I use? How hard should I hit the ball? And think about that before we actually enter the sand trap. And that's hard to do in life because we're in the middle of that sand trap of life and we feel like that's where we're going to focus our attention. And where do we focus our attention? We focus it on fear many times. We focus it on worry. So what's going to happen? What we worry about and what we're fearful of will take place, right? We know that. We can say that, but it's hard to get away from that at times. And so what we have to do is understand that we can imagine the perfect result. And when we do that and sustain our faith with that, we start to move forward and not be stuck in that sand trap. You can do it with your children. You can do it with friends. You can do it on work. You can do it in any health issue you have. You can do it in any way whatsoever if you just remember to release yourself, to let go, and to recognize the challenge before. And how many people like elimination statements, statements of denial? Oh, you're learning. That's great, okay? So a statement of denial, which is a statement of elimination, is how I deny that something in my past, some thought I have, some fear I have, has any power over me whatsoever. That's what I need to step away from. And it's that power of elimination that provides me the ability to create a space in my heart and my mind so that I can take an affirmation and put it to work. I can't have an affirmation in my head and a negative thought in my head at the same time. So I've got to get rid of the negative thought and replace it with a positive thought, which is the affirmation. That's the power of elimination as we work through these things. So one of the things I want to do is just as we look at those things is share with you a quote by Bobby Jones. And I don't even think I can read it here because that print is so small. And Bobby Jones, again, was... two or three keys. Number one is that we have to be willing uh, to practice.
can control and make the decisions through our faith, through our imagination, through the power of elimination. But we can't keep things from happening. And the real question is, when things happen, do I allow it to separate me from God, or do I allow it to be closer to God? Because I already am as close as I can get to God. But I forget it sometimes. And so, this idea of practicing. And when we practice, we practice prayer time. We practice uh, in such a way, uh, through counseling maybe, lots of different ways that we can practice. Let me, let me share one way right now that you can practice before we get to preparation. And uh, beginning in, in <clears throat> uh, January, we're going to have a one-year course. But here's how it's going to happen. It'll be five sessions of two weeks each throughout the whole year. One starts with the power of thought, and the last one says the power of being transformed. So over a one-year period, and I invite all of you to attend this, in one-year period, you will move. And I don't care where you are right now. If you take this seriously, you will move up in consciousness, vibrate at a higher level, and understand yourself and your relationship with God even better. And you will feel transformed. I'll guarantee you that. If you do the time, if you take the time and do that. So we need to practice, then we need preparation, which that's part of. And preparation. Happen in her life is not a challenge. Shoot. I was hoping somebody had faith in here anyway. So, uh, so that's that. See, we all know that. So, what do we do? We can get ready for it, we can prepare ourselves for it, and we do it by staying uh, spiritually fed. We do it by in really looking at ourselves and learning to think from the heart and be from the heart. We look at we do it by dialogue and, and, and by discussion. We do it through classes. But most of all, we do it by spending time and understanding ourselves and understanding how we want to show up when something difficult happens. It's our choice. And those who make that choice and are aware of that seem to move through life a lot easier than those who don't. At least that's been my observation. The next thing we have here uh, is this power of praying effectively. Now, how do we pray effectively? Well, there's no bad way of praying. Let me just say that. I mean, And he would pray, dear God, fix this bum leg. Dear God, I sure hope this leg that doesn't work well will work someday. And what do you think happened? Yeah. Nothing. Then he started to pray, dear God, thank you for this beautiful leg. Thank you for this leg that functions perfectly. Thank you for this leg that carries me around without a limp. Now, I know some of you are going to say this isn't true, but it is. His leg grew two and a half inches from age 70 to age 80, and he walked with just a slight limp for the rest of his life. That's the power of faith, and that's the power of affirmative prayer. Pray for what you want, not for what you don't want. And then the next thing here, and the last one, is perseverance, that we have to be able to off of that when it came to my religious life. I believed that I was unworthy to be affiliated, if you would, with God. 
I believed that I needed something in my life to save me from myself. But I felt kind of good about myself. I couldn't quite understand that. I mean, I certainly wasn't perfect, but I was okay. And so what happened is, is when I came into unity, I started to understand because I'd gone through some pretty tough times personally and trials and tribulations, as they call it, in my life, and I didn't really know how to handle that. And through unity, I learned to heal the wounds that I had personally of things that had happened to me and to grow and to understand that God had given me the ability to express God in my life. And when we know we have that ability, we can do great things. Because God is great. God is no small thing. And again, when I use the word God, I'm using it from a Western perspective, but I'm not using it as an entity. I'm not using it as a thing. I'm using the word God as an energy, a spirit, love, that which works through our heart, that which is our creative source. And so I started to understand that, and I started to understand that I started to heal. But I did not heal overnight. I have to tell you, you know, I shouldn't tell you this, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, I was a unity spiritual leader, and I'd been for about two years. And one day I said to myself, hmm, I wonder if the Baptists have it right. Am I doing harm to people? Because I got a little note on my car that said I was. Am I doing harm to people? Well, it didn't last long because I knew better. I knew what I felt within myself was right. And so I was able to say, no, I'm moving in the right direction. But I still had a little doubt, and I had to answer that doubt. And I had to look at that square in the face and not run from it. So I eliminated that thought through the power of elimination. And so we need to per persevere. You know, it took 40 years, 50 years to learn to do something that maybe was incorrect, can you in one day turn it around? Unlikely. Unlikely. And so we must be willing to persevere. And as we persevere, what happens is we begin to find out that we can handle life, that we can get in the sand trap, and because we practice, because we're ready for it, we can use one stroke and be out of the sand trap and be very close to that magic little hole that you want the ball to go into. And that's the whole of peace. That's the whole of joy. And that's the whole of understanding. And that's the whole of loving yourself. There is a minister who had to be a golfer who wrote this particular... Okay, our ushers will come forward now. And as they come forward, we provide...